Section 15.7 Integrals and Cylindrical Coordinates We used polar coordinates when integrating with double integrals, so it'd be nice if there was something similar to use for triple integrals. So what we do is we define uh, cylindrical coordinates using a uh, point in three-dimensional space represented by the order triple r theta z. Well, aren't there are portal coordinates of the projection of p onto the xy plane, and z is the direct distance from the xy plane to p. So what we do is we do polar coordinates, and then we just move our point up however much z is. So z stays the same, and the x and y are the same as they were in polar. So that means converting, it's the same thing for r and for theta, but z is just z. So as an example, how about we plot the point with cylindrical coordinates, 2, 2 pi over 3, 1, and we'll find its rectangular coordinates. So we need um, some axes, so let's draw these. So here's y, here's x and c, and I'm going to move uh, 2 pi over 3 in the x, y plane and polar coordinates. So it's like somewhere over here at an angle of 2 pi over 3. And then I go out to a radius of 2. So we'll say this radius over here is 2. And then it's 1 up in the air for z. So I just move my polar point up 1. So let's say that uh, this is the point over here, 2, 2 pi over 3, 1. So this distance is 1. OK, let's uh, convert it now. We've got from polar coordinates, x is r cosine theta. So that's 2 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3, which is 2 times minus 1 half, which is minus 1. Then y is 2 times the sine of pi, 2 pi over 3. So that's 2 times rad 3 over 2, which is rad 3. So z is still 1, doesn't change. So we end up with the point minus 1, rad 3, 1 in rectangular coordinates, or Cartesian coordinates. Let's now uh, find cylindrical coordinates of a point with rectangular coordinates, 3 minus 3 minus 7. So r is, well r squared is x squared plus y squared, so r is the square root of those guys. So it's the square root of 3 squared plus minus 3 squared, which is 3 rad 2. Then what tangent of theta, because that will tell us what theta is. So tangent of theta is y over x, so that's minus 3 over 3, which is minus 1. So that means that uh, tan inverse of minus 1 is 7 pi over 4, so theta is 7 pi over 4. And it's any uh, multiple of 2 pi added to that also. We've got tons of different possibilities for theta, so we can add 2n pi to that for integer n. And then z is still minus 7. So that means that we have the point uh, 3 radical 2, 7 pi over 4, minus 7. But we could add 2n pi to 7 pi over 4. So if we add, let's say, minus 2 pi, then we could get um, backwards a little bit. We get the exact same point, it would just be 3 rad 2 minus pi over 4, minus 7, if you were to go around the circle around. The same way that we find infinite uh, representations for points in polar coordinates, there are infinite representations of points in cylindrical coordinates. Let's now describe the surface whose equation in cylindrical coordinates is z equals r. So notice this means that the height of this surface is equal to the radius that goes outwards at every level. So if you were to slice this thing horizontally, then you get a whole bunch of circles and polar coordinates. They're all like uh, z equals r, where the distance is equal to the radius. So because it keeps increasing as we go up the radius, we'd imagine this thing looks something like a cone. Let's verify that by switching to rectangular coordinates. So we have z squared equal to r squared. 
but r squared is x squared plus y squared. So that means that we have z squared equal to x squared plus y squared. And remember from section 12.6, that is a cone. So we could draw it maybe something like uh, this, let's see. Okay, very roughly. I should put in some axes too, so throw in a Z axis. And here's Y. And I need X. Okay, so that's our cone. Okay, now that we have cylindrical coordinates, let's talk about integrating using them. So let's say we have a type 1 region. So first we integrate with respect to z between two functions of x and y. Then for our domain d, it's in the xy plane, we can just treat it as a polar region. So we just integrate with polar coordinates the same as we were before. So basically, the integrals are almost the same as they would be for polar or for type 1 z regions instead of going to uh, dz dy dx or dz dx dy, you go to dz dr d theta. So you convert x and y to r cosine theta or sine theta, same as before, you just throw in an extra z. So that means that your z limits are functions of r and theta, or r cosine theta and r sine theta, because they're functions of x and y. So say we have a solid E, which lies within the cylinder x squared plus y squared is 1, below the plane z equals 4, and above the paraboloid 1 minus x squared minus y squared. So it's this like solid over here. Alright, we have the density at any point proportional to its distance from the axis of the cylinder. Let's find the mass of E. So first we should probably describe the region E. So E can be described using cylindrical coordinates conveniently which will make it easy for us to integrate. Notice this is like a classic cylinder, a circular cylinder, so your mind should go straight to cylindrical coordinates if you're doing a triple integral. So we have all of the r theta z's such that theta goes between 0 and 2 pi because it goes all the way around the circle. And r it looks like goes between uh, 0 and 1 because the base in the xy plane is just a circle, radius 1. So we have uh, r between 0 and 1, and then z goes between two functions of r and theta. So it looks like the bottom one is this guy over here, z equals 1 minus r squared, and the top one is z equals 4. So those will be our two functions for z. So we'll go from 1 minus r squared all the way up until 4. So now we need our function that we're integrating. So it's going to be a function of three variables. It's a triple integral. Remember that to integrate, um, to find mass, we need to integrate density. So our function is our density function, which I told us is proportional to distance. So the distance from the axis of the cylinder is the distance from the center. So if I look in the xy plane for the distance from the center, that's just the square root of x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared. Then it's proportional. So it's just the constant times that. So I'll make the constant k, for example, and I'll have the square root of x squared plus y squared. But square root of x squared plus y squared in polar coordinates is r, so it's just k times r. So that means that my mass is my triple integral over e of k times the square root of x squared plus y squared dv. And we can use polar coordinates to write that as the iterated integral where we do theta last from 0 to 2 pi, r in the middle from 0 to 1, and z from 1 minus r squared to 4 of k times r for k times x squared plus y squared. And then dv is 
r dz d r d theta. Remember that we're integrating polar when we integrate cylindrical. We just throw in the extra dz, so we still need the r d r d theta. Okay, so now we have the integral from zero to two pi of the integral from zero to one of k r squared times four minus one minus r squared because remember this is a constant with respect to z when we integrate and then dr d theta so that's just k times the integral from 0 to 2 pi d theta times the integral from 0 to 1 of 3r squared plus r to the fourth dr notice we can split our integrals because we can split the product of the functions of r and theta. So this is just 2 pi times k times r cubed plus r to the fifth over 5 from 0 to 1, which is 12 pi k over 5. Let's now evaluate this iterated integral. So we should probably try to describe our region E first, reflect it as a solid, and then maybe convert to cylindrical coordinates because look at this mess over here. Notice these kind of look like circles, like the square root of x squared plus y squared definitely looks like a circle. And then this looks like the top half of a circle and the bottom half of a circle. That looks like a circle. So it looks like this should be a pretty good candidate for cylindrical coordinates because when we see a bunch of circles and we have a triple integral, that's usually a go-to for cylindrical coordinates. So how about we write our region E as the set of points x, y, z such that uh, negative 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2 because it's our outermost one for x. And then for y we have minus the square root of 4 minus x squared and we have the square root of 4 minus x squared. And then for z, we have the square root of x squared plus y squared. And we have 2. So that's our region E. So if we were to draw it, it should look like uh, z goes from some circle, square root of x squared plus y squared, but if z is equal to that, that's the same as z squared equal to x squared plus y squared, but in the top part of our uh, three-dimensional space. So we, as we said previously, that's a cone, so it's just the top half of the cone. So I'll try to draw on that. And knit my cone part. And it looks like it gets cut off at 2. So the z-axis should poke out at 2. and then I can go inside. And I should put this in the xy plane also. So it would be nice to figure out what it looks like when it projects downward so we can convert that to polar. So notice that's the top part going down into the xy plane. So the shadow of this thing is like this little uh, circle in the xy plane. So this circle has radius 2 because it's the shadow from the cutoff at the top where the square root of x squared plus y squared equals 2, which is r. So it looks like we could describe our region E as a region in cylindrical coordinates if we say that it's all of the r theta z's such that theta goes between 0 and 2 pi because it goes all the way around the circle in the xy plane and r goes between 0 and 2. And then it looks like z goes from this surface over here where it's uh, just equal to whatever the r value is because that's how we describe cones. So z equals r. And then it gets cut off the top at z equals 2. So z goes between the function r and the function 2. So that means that our 
iterated integral, I'll rewrite it from minus 2 to 2, from minus the square root of 4 minus x squared to square root of 4 minus x squared to the square root of x squared plus y squared all the way up to 2 of x squared plus y squared dz dy dx can be rewritten as a triple integral over e by Fubini of x squared plus y squared dv and we can rewrite that in cylindrical coordinates again using Fubini as the integral from 0 to 2 pi the integral from 0 to 2 and the integral from r to 2 using our new description for our region e then we were integrating x squared plus y squared so that's just r squared and polar and then we've got r dz dr d theta because we have r dr d theta and we have a dz so we integrate first with respect to z which means that this guy's a constant so it's just r cubed times 2 minus r because b minus a times our constant so we have integral from 0 to 2 pi d theta because I can split that and the integral from 0 to 2 of r cubed times 2 minus r dr so that just works out to 2 pi times 1 half r to the fourth minus 1 fifth r to the fifth from 0 to 2 which is 16 over 5 pi.